All right, our next major topic is resources for church planting. And uh, this is always a, a hot topic, a controversial topic. Um, should a church plant receive a lot of outside assistance? Maybe there's a partner organization that is helping pay for the church planter. Uh, maybe there is a, somebody that's willing to build a building for that new church. Um, where are the resources going to come if uh, you're doing evangelistic, using evangelistic methods that uh, are cost money, whether it's advertising or producing materials or renting a space for an evangelistic event? How will this new church plant be resourced? Well, one thing before we even get further into this, remember what we've been saying all along. We want to see methods that are ultimately locally sustainable. Now, we may need some resources to get this, the church plant started, to, to sort of jump start it and get it going. But we want to always be thinking, how can we do this in a way that's reproducible with the resources people do have? and not always be dependent on a lot of outside resources. So um, let's talk just a minute about some biblical guidelines and the whole idea of resource sharing in God's mission. First of all, Proverbs 19.2, it is not good to have zeal without knowledge or to be hasty and miss the way. Now sometimes Christians are very zealous about this, the cause of God but they're not very wise about the way they go about it. And so we want to be zealous, we want to be passionate about the things of God. We also want to have knowledge and do things wisely. And if we're thinking long-term, church reproduction, that means the way we use resources has to be done wisely so that we don't set a precedent that's not reproducible or that can have negative effects in the long run. At the same time, Paul could say in 2 Corinthians 8, our desire is not that others might be relieved while you're hard pressed, but that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need so that in turn their plenty will supply what you need and there will be equality. Now Paul's writing the Corinthian church. There is a collection being taken up for famine in the Jerusalem church. So we're not talking about monies or collection for church planting. He's talking about helping the need of the church in Jerusalem and saying, look, you in Corinth, you have resources, financial resources that can help alleviate the need in Jerusalem. And so you should share because the Jerusalem has a spiritual uh, resource that they can share with you. And so there's a mutuality that's being called for here. So yes, we should generously share our resources with those who have less resources. And so again, we just want to do this in a way that is wise. Now, there are worldview factors that come to play in the way in which we even look at the nature of resources. How do cultures view the nature of resources? For example, are they meant to be saved, invested, or spent? Some cultures have a tradition of being savers. They save for the future. And so people save money so their kids can get a good education or they save up money so they can buy a house. Some cultures don't have a saving tradition. <laughs> they spend money as they get it and, uh, because they don't need to really save for anything. Their provisions are provided in other ways, whether it's through the government, whether it's through their tribal life, their village life. Saving is not a high value. And so they look at resources differently. Are resources replenishable or exhaustible? You see, if I live in a situation where, for example, even my daily food, um, you have a crop that grows year round. If you're a hunter and gatherer where you can go and hunt for food on a daily basis, where you can always go pick some fruit and you have daily food, resources are easily replenishable. If I live in a culture where resources are very limited, and maybe we have hard winters and we have to save up the food in the, in the harvest time to get us through the winter, that's a very different approach to the way we even look at the use of resources. Do we have a more holistic or more analytic view of resources? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's very typical for a church in the West to say, we are going to donate money 
for a particular project. Maybe that project is to buy uh, bicycles so that evangelists can ride their bicycle from village to village. That would be a very analytical way of looking at the way the money should be spent because what can often happen is the money gets sent and it was uh, designated for bicycles, but guess what happens when it arrived on location? The pastor of the church got sick and the pastor needs medicine and there's no money to buy the medicine, but there's bicycle money. Now what's more important? Buying bicycles or buying medicine so the pastor can get healthy again? See, if he's not healthy, he can't even ride the bicycle, right? Well, that's a holistic way of saying, look, there's a need here. This is a need. It's the greater need. And even though the money was designated for bicycles, we're going to have to use it for this. Makes sense, right? Well, on the donor side, if you're coming from a more analytic culture, you say, wait a minute, that money was donated for bicycles. You just can't go and buy medicine with it, can you? And in fact, in America, if a church uh, has raised money for something like that and it gets used for something else, the uh, Internal Revenue Service, the tax people, could come after that church and say, wait a minute, uh, you raised that money for a particular project, you can't do that. The church could get in trouble. And so you've got some cultures that have a very analytical book that say we've got a ledger, the money's for this. Other cultures are seeing it much more holistically. And so this raises questions of accountability. For the person who used that money to buy medicine, that was the accountable, the right thing to do. For the person who's coming more analytically, it was the wrong thing to do. So that can lead to a lot of conflict and it doesn't necessarily mean one right and one is the other is wrong, but it does mean you have those two groups are going to have to come to an agreement on how they work together and what's really accountable and how resources get used. So how cultures view the use of resources in relationships, it starts getting more complicated at this point. For example, are we business partners or are we family members? See, many cultures view a partnership more in terms of a business relationship. We'll talk more about that later. Or is it a family relationship? Because that's a very different kind of a relationship. We're going to use our resources more holistically in a family relationship, but in a business relationship it's going to look different. Is it more paternalistic or more functionalistic? In other words, is the person who's giving the money controlling the ministry? That would be sort of a paternalistic way to use resources where very often the donor says, I'm only going to give the money if you do this and this. And maybe it's not even just what the money is being used for. Sometimes they'll say, well, we'll only give money if you have a certain doctrinal position or other issues that the donor is concerned about. So there, it's a more controlling kind of relationship. Is there interdependence or independence. Sometimes we want churches to become self-sustaining and that's a good thing, but there's also a level of interdependence. Is there a two-way street in this relationship? Is there a mutuality or is it only a one-way street? Well, these are all questions that need to be thought through. How cultures understand accountability as we've already talked about. Every culture has some form of accountability, but different cultures have different ways that they look at accountability and so that will have to be decided upon. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.